Ah, what a surprise to see you here. Ha, huh. well do you want to come with us? We're about to go on a journey to the Ocean View Mine here in Southern California. We're going to be getting a behind the scenes look at the underground mining process. We're going to be digging for our own crystals and there's going to be some shenanigans as well. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope it educates you on the importance of mining and educating others on how that process works. Uh, what do you think we're gonna find today? A lot of rocks. A lot of rocks. A lot of rocks. A lot of rocks. Tourmaline. <laughs> I'm really digging. Hopefully some tourmaline. I mean, somebody tourmaline. over there found some watermelon yeah, tourmaline already. Some. Already, already found, found it? Already yeah. found it? Found a watermelon Damn, tourmaline. Damn, it's not even 10 a.m. We're gonna tourmaline. find a giant tourmaline. We're gonna find a blue cap tourmaline. Blue cap tourmaline. What do you, what do you think we're gonna find? Uh, the gems within. <laughs> Gyms within. Okay, that's profound. I like it. <laughs> Seems like somebody already found a, uh, a watermelon. I found a donut. Oh, you found a donut? Damn, that's good stuff. Just that good. Rare. I think if we use one of those, it would be easier. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. That's a great idea. A pegmatite is a pocket in rock that is filled with nutrient rich fluids. Um, and this makes a really good environment for crystals to form. Some of those crystals include quartz, beryl, spodumene, and tourmaline. And here we see this is a piece of pegmatite from the mine, and it has some shoral, which is black tourmaline crystals in it, as well as quartz. This is a great example here of how the pegs work. Uh, basically, you can see this lower section through here is very tight grain, fine crystals. We call this section our line rock, because a lot of times it'll kind of be wavy lines in it. Um, and then up right above it, you'll see it's very dramatically, like much larger grain crystals. So this very fine grain stuff is very hard and dense. And usually right on this line is where our pockets sit, right below the tourmaline and right on top of this line rock. Mm. So um, it's angled the same way as the dike. Mm. So you'll see it kind of like this in all the tunnels from top to bottom. Mm. And that's kind of, we're just centering it to try to get as much as we can out of it. Yeah. Um, if there's one zone that's particularly rich, we'll do what we call a stope, which you can kind of see one back there. Or we'll chase the pegmatite uphill. Uh -huh. um, but this is what we call our main haulage tunnels through here. You'll notice the tourmaline will start to get a little bigger through here and a little bit more of them. And then right here, we'll give a little pause. But this stove right here is our first major famous pocket zone. This one is the 49er. Um, it was found on the Jeff's 49th birthday, the owner. Mm. And um, it was an absolutely amazing pocket. It went literally from the floor almost up to the very top there. Wow. Uh, stuff full of bicolored barrels, uh, aquamarine, morganite, combos, um, and amazing size and quality. And then right here is our first deposit of kunzite we had, um, which is really fun. You'll see this pink clay start to show up, which we haven't seen yet in the tunnels. So this is our first <laughs> spot of Montmorillonite, the pink clay, um, which is kind of a form of decomposed spodumene. But we had some beautiful kunzites out of here. Um, they weren't the biggest we ever found, but they were great quality. Um, kunzite's one of my favorites, and it's what we're most famous for probably here, um, our kahuna pockets. But this was the first section, so we had barrels right above us. And then right below that, you get some, a little bit of pink clay showing up, and that's when we get our kunzites. And then we kept pushing through and found kahuna one up ahead. If you look down to the floor of you, you'll see the pitolite showing up. This purple sparkly mica. Um, that's our first um, sign of really good lithium. That's um, Most of the good gems are around that. It's funny, in the ocean view, you'll see rooms full of it. But on the Paula Chief, you'll only ever see it directly associated with pocket. It's really odd. Um, but right there, you see these huge shorals pointing down. This was a nice pocket zone all through here. Um, had some beautiful green and blue cap tourmaline came out yeah. here right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, amazing quality too. What's this running here? Is this like electrical stuff? Or uh, we have no electricity in here. Uh, this is a air hose. Um, we run our compressor, runs um, air off the drill, and a lot of the other tools we use, okay. the Matic. 
Um, this is a fan. Mm -hmm. So if we're ever working with machinery mm -hmm. um, for exhaust, dust, stuff like that, we'll run a fan. Yeah. Um, and then the PVC is water. Mm -hmm. So that keeps, again, dust down and uh, cools the machines down when we're running the drill. Mm -hmm. Which if you listen, you can hear a really low hum mm -hmm. off in the distance. That's actually Steve and Phil drilling down below wow. on the bottom of the mine. <laughs> How many days a year do you think you're drilling or like working on this excavating or? It's really hard. Um, sometimes you'll do it every day. Uh -huh. um, sometimes you'll do it, um, you know, once a week or okay. something. You know, about, usually we try to be up here three, four days a week. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some days you're just fixing stuff. Right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's actually a really cool photo. If you look in the, um, what is it? Not Min Record, but there's a, one of the mineral magazines of uh, California issue. Hmm. They have the whole crew standing right up in here digging the Kahuna pockets. Cool. Um, hmm. This is one of the more famous tourmalines out of the Kahuna. Wow. Um, highly irradiated tourmaline. Really? Wow. Um, so yeah, that's why it gives it the really dark color. Uh, it looks more like stuff you'd see out of Brazil. Hmm. But then it was really fun because right next to it, you would get these super brilliant um, clean, almost Congo looking tourmalines. Um, but they were literally in a pocket, like a foot away from it, wow. right next to each other. No and then right below it was a pocket full of kunzite. Wow. Um, which the kunzites were some of the most amazing crystals out of here. Here's the big kahuna. Wow. Um, wow. But yeah, that one is a beast. It's um, well thought to be the best terminated gem kunzite crystal ever out of North America. Wow. Um, but yeah, basically right where our heads are at was stuff full of gems when they came through. Wow. And to your point earlier about shooting the pocket, mm -hmm. when they drilled this pocket, mm -hmm. they hardly even knew it. They, the drills just hit the end of it. Oh, huh. And when they shot, yeah. Steve tells me the story all the time. He said he was walking back and there was a pile of that red mud yeah. flown 30 yards down the tunnel, uh -huh. stuck to the wall. Cool. And there was a perfect kunzite sticking out of it. Wow. <laughs> it just <laughs> flung it across the whole mine, and that wow. clay just condenses it so well and absorbs all the. The thing was just sitting there, perfect. Wow. So, wow. size. Is that what that pink is right here? Yeah, yeah. That, that's. I mean, that stuff is really interesting, actually. It's mulberry and that pink clay, um, full of lithium and manganese and all sorts of funky stuff. But usually, when we see this much of it, it's highly altered. Um, everything we see in here gets altered. Um, so we had morganites here, we had tourmaline, a little bit of spodumene. Um, even the quartz here was literally so etched it was gray and looked like um, like a coral reef. Like it was just jagged. Um, it was just overcooked, um, which is really unfortunate. These are funny. You can actually see the imprint that this pink clay was an actual kunzite crystal. Mm. You see the, the imprint on the quartz. Mm. Well, that was a that was a full spodumene crystal at one point. You wow. can even see this crystal structure to it, hmm. um, but it just decomposed. It didn't, you know, solidify and stay gemmy. Hmm. And actually, we parked the buggies probably about 20 feet that direction and about 65 feet directly above our heads. Okay. Well, um, is where the buggies are parked, <laughs> right in front of the tunnel. We have actually drilled holes right into the tunnel there um, for a radio antenna. Uh, but you know, it's. That's pretty much half of the ocean view. We have a whole other section down below. Hmm. We have some beautiful morganites came out down below here. Um, that beautiful and hydro morganite, that was a fun one. Even when you have all the minerals and all the ingredients, you need to be cooked right to you know really make the good crystals. So if it's that, once you hit like a quartz wall, it's just there's not enough space in between them to like... For so the if you look back on this pillar here, you can see that red clay. Yeah. It looks like there were pockets there, hmm. uh, but not a single crystal in any of it. Huh. The quartz... It expands as it crystallizes okay. slightly, and it pressurizes everything around it. So anything. Um, and it just shatters it. Okay. Uh, it I've, this, this section here literally went from here all the way across into that pillar, huh. and all the way down this pillar and that down to the road below. It's a huge section where it just ports out, hmm. and it just ruined any potential stuff in there. But on the edges, you can get, like on the edge right there, we have nice morganites. Okay. Huh. On the edge down below, we had a little bit of spodumene and some morganite down here too, actually. But yeah, when you're in the middle of this quartz, it just kind of ruins everything. Hmm. I've seen some beautiful uh, garnet crystals frozen in them, and they're glassy, they're great, but they're fractured because it was just pressured and squished from all sides. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, not a fun thing for us to see, but it's very beautiful. So guys, what did you think is your best find of the mine trip? 
without a doubt, the smoky quartz. Oh, this is yours. Cool. Yeah. Are you ever gone digging for quartz in like this That's good. <laughs> Darn. I did actually. Yeah? Just once. I think something really interesting that we have actually have in the video is this type of tourmaline. You can see there's like a lot of pink. It looks frosty and not very well crystallized. On this side, it looks blue. It's like a frosted surface. This is a better example of the blue, and the pink is in the center. It's like really soft pink on the inside and a really nice blue on the outside. These gems are not that stable for cutting. And the guy on the video explains it really well where they found them and the difference in age where the pink part formed and millions of years later how the blue part formed shows to tell how long crystals take to form in the earth and how many like stages of growth and mineralization they can they can form in The tourmalines actually were etched on the inside. They had a pink core that was etched and a gemmy blue skin on top of it. So were they hollow then? A, a tiny bit, but okay. it was it was really weird. They were weak because the core was weak. Oh. But um, to me, that shows multiple events. They formed a nice pink crystal uh -huh. that got etched and altered and messed up, and then a very late stage growth of blue over top of it. So it's really fun the dynamic you can. A really nice example of how different minerals can form in pigmentites is this piece I found sifting. It's a black tourmaline in quartz. This was in between two pieces of big quartz. And you can also get tourmalinated quartz this way. So, in conclusion, what I think I learned is mines vary from country to country and from mineral to mineral. They can change a lot. For example, this mine, they're mining in tunnels and using explosives. And it's in the US, they have a lot of regulations. And it's pricey to buy the explosives, it's pricey to get the permits to use the explosives. It's, um, yeah, it's kind of a hard process and most of the of the money to run the mine goes to the permits and to the government, so it's kind of hard to run it. That's why the mine is accepting visitors like us, because they need that money to, to keep the operation going, to keep buying the explosives, to keep finding gems. And the thing is, they're blasting through the rock and then could be periods of seven years that they don't find anything remarkable. And they just they're just keeping afloat. And then when they find a big chunk of tourmaline, that's when the real money comes in and that's when the like this rush of, of really nice minerals appear and they get a lot of money. Oh man, what a fun time that was. Thanks for joining us on the mine trip. This is part one in an educational video series meant to inform the public and consumers about the inner workings of the gem and mineral industry. Together, we can take one small step and turn it into one giant leap for mankind. Oh. Hey there, I didn't see you there. Wait, can we read it? <laughs> Troll is a protective stone that protects you from what? Negative, negative energy? Ener blocks negative energy. Blocks negative energies because it's really dark and black. That bounces back the dark energies. Remember, kids, can those minerals form at the same time? Oh man, wasn't that a lot of fun? Thanks for joining us on the mine tour. One thing that I... Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at that truck.